right, welcome back. I'm Jimmy DeGate, and joining me now, Dr. Peter Feo, who's an interventional cardiologist at CIS and uh, computer uh, tomography medical director at CIS. <laughs> okay, good. A bunch of different names. Yeah, and we're going to be talking about a mitral clip valve. I'm going to talk about uh, one of the research projects that we're currently undergoing, okay. which is a, uh, a percutaneous mitral valve repair. Okay. And uh, when you look at uh, mitral valve disease, it uh, affects an uh, enormous amount of uh, the population across the country. The uh, two basic forms are those people who have a degenerative valve disease where basically the valve itself is, is defective, and then there's a functional valve disease where somebody's had a heart attack and the, uh, the heart stretches, and as the heart stretches, it uh, makes the valve incompetent. Um, up until recently, the way to fix that was going to be open heart surgery, and, and it still is the, the, the gold standard. And we've been fortunate enough to be part of a research trial uh, that looked at trying to do this in a uh, less invasive way uh, called the eval mitral clip. Okay. And uh, what this basically entails is, is uh, recapitulating a surgical intervention that was uh, pretty popular in Europe, not so much in the United States, of actually tying the uh, uh, two leaflets together at the very tip. And, uh, one of the things that I describe to my patients about this thing, it's kind of like when you broke your finger, the doctor would literally tape two fingers together to use one as a splint, and that's basically what's happening in the mitral valve, is that we're using one valve to splint for the other. Okay, and uh, so, so the goal would be uh, to do that as opposed to the open heart surgery? It's still a research project, and, and so we're, there's a couple of things we're looking at. We're trying to look at those patients who are considered too high risk for surgical intervention, uh, because of some comorbid disease. Uh, maybe they've had previous bypass surgery, maybe they had two or three bypass surgeries. Uh, they've had chest radiation, something like that, that would really prohibit the surgeon from going back in a second or third time. And we've looked at that group, and then we've looked at another group uh, who, where we actually randomized. So we took, uh, the patients would come to us, and we would randomize them, and some of them we would send to surgery, and some of them we would do the clip. And that was really detailed to look at seeing who would benefit from this kind of a procedure. Uh, this uh, trial was reported at the ACC uh, just recently uh, here and uh, showed that there was a substantial um, decrease in complication rates uh, with this type of procedure. The efficacy, however, was not that of surgery, and that's kind of what we would expect. Uh, so what we're, what we're buying here, so to speak, for a decreased uh, effectiveness is a higher safety profile. Okay, uh, I tell you what, uh, do you have a video or something? I that think you... we have a couple of videos here. Okay, good. Let's see if we can uh, get to those and maybe this, you can tell us what we're looking at. Right here, we're just we're looking at an illustration of what mitral regurgitation uh, would be. And this is, uh, if you look here where the blue is going up, that's not supposed to be going there. Uh, the, the flow here going to the right side would be the aortic valve. The flow going straight up would be the mitral valve. Uh, I think the next clip actually shows a procedure, or actually uh, this is an angiogram of uh, a patient that got done previously. So you can look at here and you'll see going to the right side, you see this huge amount of dye here. And this is a left atrium that fills up. And this is, this is previous, before the surgery or before the clip. And then after the clip, we have one clip, you can see it sitting there right there. And now you see on the right side of the screen, virtually no regurgitation whatsoever. And this is a, this is a representative of what we see a lot of times in these kind of cases. We have one, uh, I think we have one more. Yeah, this is actually a, a cartoon, if you will of what the procedure entails. So this is actually coming through the septum, and this is what the device looks like. And it kind of looks like what I, what I uh, told my patients, kind of like a very, very fancy clothespin. Uh, basically, you're allowed to get into the atrium. This is done under an echocardiogram. We basically have a tube in the throat, and we do a TEE. Uh, we have the mitral valve. We're able to sort of maneuver it, which is, uh, uh, it looks a little easier than it actually occurs here. This clip then opens up. Uh, we're able to rotate it to make sure that we're aligned properly. Once we're happy with this, we can see and it rotate it either way to make sure that we, we like the alignment. And we're, these are some of the things that we learned uh, during this procedure was how to align this thing properly and, and uh, how much uh, accuracy we needed to be, how much we didn't need to be, et cetera. This clip is then pushed into the left ventricle like so. Uh, we are seeing the jet, it comes up, uh, it actually grabs the uh, leaflet. Now in this case it didn't get a very good thing and what's nice about that is that you can actually let go, reposition your, your clip a little bit, re-grab again, try a second time, a third time, a fourth time, and in this case you can see that the much regurgitation uh, is gone. Uh, at which point you're happy with what you do, uh, you can release the clip. 
in the trial, we were allowed to add a second clip if necessary. And so in, in a handful of patients, they actually have two clips. Now, how long is this trial uh, ongoing? It's, it's continuing to go as we speak. So there is still, there is still a, it is still a research project. Uh, it's still uh, something that's being uh, monitored by the FDA and by uh, Abbott Medical, who's the sponsoring company of this. Uh, so it continues as we speak. And typically, uh, what is, how does that work? I mean, a trial of that basis, I mean, it, it, it has to go for a certain period of time and then there's a study or, well, or, what, what, or analyzation of the sure. results. Yeah, so what we, what we do is we go through the procedure itself in this case and uh, somebody would come to us and we would offer them the opportunity to participate in the trial. And it's, it's a fairly tedious process. But there are, in, as in every trial in medicine, there are a bunch of hurdles that need to be uh, jumped, whether the patient qualifies or not for the procedure. Uh, and once they do qualify and they're randomized either to surgery or into the clip, we then proceed and do accordingly the procedure. What's then done is, is a, uh, an enormous amount of data is then recorded based on the patient demographics, uh, the procedural demographics, how the patient's doing. We do repeated serial echocardiograms on these patients uh, right at discharge, one at one month, one at three months, six months, one year, and then we follow them out for five years uh, to see how they are doing. Uh, the very first clip we put in was now coming, approaching its fourth year now, uh, and we're able to see how he has progressed uh, very nicely uh, over the past four years. Very interesting. I tell you what, why don't we do this? We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna continue our discussion with Dr. Peter Fail and uh, We'll have some more of his comments on this most interesting procedure.